Yeah, I can hear you this time. So Yeah, you're not staticky now. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I don't know what the issue is with that. Like, I was hearing you, but I don't know. When I heard the recording, it was like that, too. So something was messed up. So it sounds like it must have been Discord. Yeah. If this is yeah. working. I've actually only done this once. I did a, a podcast with um, the Crypto Sky, if you've seen him on on Twitter. No. Um, he's, so anyway, I did an interview with him, and, uh, you know, I realized that it was probably really good content. So um, I'm going to try it myself, I figured, you know? Yeah. Do you post it on Twitter? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I, you know, I, this is my first episode, so I, I plan on putting it on Twitter and maybe like a website. Uh, it's it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Yeah, um, definitely trying to come up with some, some different content rather than just like charts and everything. So, um, all right, yeah. well, let's go ahead and get started. I just want to talk for maybe like 30 minutes or an hour, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, let's do I know it. you're on vacation, so try to keep it short. Um, That's all good. I got time. All right, cool. So I guess, first of all, you know, when I first got on Twitter, you were one of the first personalities that I saw. Um, you already had something going with your YouTube show and stuff. So what kind of got you interested in, in crypto in the first place? All right, all right. So it's a really long story, but we'll start from the beginning. I first heard about crypto and specifically Bitcoin in 2013, way back when um, I'm a libertarian. I was listening to Ron Paul on okay. the Alex Jones show. Oh, OK. And Alex was talking about Bitcoin. He said, what's going on with this Bitcoin stuff? And um, I don't recall exactly what was said, but they were talking about Bitcoin. At the time, it was at like $80 a coin. And that's when I started to get interested. And I actually started mining Feathercoin because I was like, man, that's still kind of pricey. $80, let's see what right. else I can do. So right. I started mining a Feathercoin on a laptop. And um, however, I didn't really look too much into the Bitcoin and purchasing Bitcoin at that time. Well, then let's fast forward a little bit more it was probably about six to eight months, and um, I heard about this website called The Silk Road, uh, just on a forum website, and it was pretty much get any, essentially the eBay of illicit goods. Right, yeah. And this kind of sparked my interest a little bit, and okay. I said, okay, and at this time now, I was like, wow, okay, Bitcoin's at 300 now. Wow. So it essentially more than tripled its value and this was in like a year time right like less than a right. year right okay. right and um actually my dates might be off i think this was like 2011 2012 and i think it was made in 2009 so i first heard about it 2011 ish okay and it was around 40 50 dollars and then 2013 when it was at around 300 mm -hmm. and um i didn't expect it to to just go up as keep going up and up and up as we saw in 2017 right so i was just in it for um other reasons yeah in regards to the silk road and um that's what got me initially into it i said okay i found this website called local bitcoins I think now they're going through a lot of scrutiny uh, because you can buy and sell Bitcoin anonymously. So a lot of people use that service. Yeah, I think people to... got in trouble from that. I know like the node oh, father. Yeah. yeah, some people are dealing with legal issues because of local Bitcoin. So Yeah, definitely a lot of money laundering going right. in and out for cashing out because these vendors on this website, they would accept only Bitcoin and they got bills to pay. Sure. They need, they need some dollars. Um, so they would cash out, they would send some to local Bitcoins and then someone like me who was wanting to resell or just get the Bitcoins, they would then open up a, a buy on local Bitcoins. I would make a deposit and there's all different kinds of options. They would do the, the prepaid cards. You would buy that and give them a code, you know, put 500 bucks on that and then they'd send you the Bitcoin or you could make a deposit into their bank account. And then once they got that deposit, they would release it. Um, or even cash face to face. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and it was a small community, but there was definitely a community there going on, and uh, everything was going great until they located the servers and the guy who was operating this service, the Silk Road, Russ Ulbricht. He is. He got life in prison, so he is still in prison, and. Um, Definitely 
backfired. Of course, when they took that one down, more came up. We saw Silk Road 2, okay. and then uh, I was on there, and then we saw Agora. I was on, at that point, at Agora. Okay. I was at a different level. I was more up there in the food chain All on right. Agora Marketplace. And then Agora went down, and then there was one last one. I can't remember the name of it. Alpha Bay, I believe. Okay. That one was relatively soon, and I think that one's down now as well. So that's what got me into crypto. Um, <laughs> it's unfortunate because I didn't hold. I mean, I did come out after my little vacation, and um, I did have some coins. But it, had I just like held from the get go and just accumulated a lot of bitcoins in 2013, right? Um, I would definitely, you know, I'd be like Roger Ver status. Maybe. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. crazy. And I'm sure there are people like that who who did vendors, that, who, yeah. who accepted it and just held it. Not many, though. I'm sure a lot sold it. Yeah, I would imagine. 2000. I would imagine yeah. a lot of people didn't want to hold on to it, especially if they're doing it for a legal activity. They try to get cash as soon as possible. You know? Oh so. yeah, it's just like with the pizza guy. You know, most people who bought at a dollar or lower, they would have sold at a thousand because that's an insane return. Okay. And so, it could be the same. It could be the same when it hits a million. Right. So we're just going to have to wait and see. You did hold some of it though, right? I mean, yes, because yes. because from what I understand, you um you ended up getting back into it, right? And now Yes. I got back into it and I started with Litecoin. I got right back onto my Coinbase account. I did have one. I've been with them from the get-go and I haven't had it. a lot of people experience issues with Coinbase. I know that their support is like non-existent. It's horrible. But I haven't had a single issue with them. I started trading with Litecoin. And um, I put my Bitcoins into the Electronium ICO back in September, October. I saw an advertisement on it on Facebook. And I said, okay, Electronium, this, this is really interesting. Mobile, okay, yeah, I saw 2 billion that. people have a smartphone. There is a market for a mobile cryptocurrency. So I put all my Bitcoins into the Electronium ICO and sold about 20% when it launched at around $0.07, cents, 7 or $0.08. Cents. Still a good return. It's an 8x. Wow. But... Um, I definitely, I thought it would pull back a lot more. I thought they would release it. And then everyone was saying on the the forums that ICOs, they're just, they're going to pull back once they release. Um, Had I just held all my Electronium um, from the get-go, you know, I made a video on Electronium, how I lost 42,000 on Electronium. Had I just like held it all and sold, like went to USDT at 24 cents, you know, I wouldn't have been at such a loss with that one. But I still have hopes for Electronium in the long term. Do you have any other alts besides Electronium? I mean, oh yeah, I yeah. know you have so, Nano and... Uh, Nano, I'm definitely a fan of Nano because the thing with Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash is that there's the fees. Yes, it's sure. not a high fee, but it's not instant. I hate waiting. Yeah, it seems like Nano is more like technologically advanced than, than those ones. They're a bit archaic. You know? Yeah, because with nano currency, every wallet has its own blockchain. Right. So I really like that aspect of it, and that's why I think nano, you know, could potentially overtake Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash for the microtransactions. And I was just talking to a guy on Twitter about this, and he said, "Well, um, I presented my argument, and he responded saying, well, now they have the Lightning Network.' Well, I said the Lightning Network. The average person." can't even get right. to figure any of this stuff doesn't out. even Private know what keys. <laughs> right yeah they're not the average joe is not going to know totally. uh, lightning network and how to use that system so nano though i think if they made it more user friendly it's potentially could take that spot for microtransactions but now they're lacking with merchants not very many merchants accept it I just finished my e-commerce website, and we are accepting nano payments using the Brain Blocks. Oh, that's cool. Uh, software. Okay. All right. So I guess for the next question, you know, I wanted to get into what were your goals with the the YouTube channel, I guess, and with the Twitter. Like, what were you trying to accomplish? Mainly to help people, and I think what really started was the whole BitConnect. Um, the BitConnect thing. I remember it. It was it was up there. It was huge. Mm-hmm. But I never really paid much attention to it. A lot of people were calling it a scam. But I, I like, if you follow me on Twitter, my YouTube, I like solid projects. You know, Bitcoin Private, Bitcoin Cash, you know, exchange tokens. I love exchange tokens, even though there's a risk there because it's on the exchange. But the exchanges will always be there. The tokens will, will come and go. Mm-hmm. But I made this channel to kind of 
I guess, warn people and allow people to learn more in regards to cryptocurrencies and all the scams going on, all the fraudulent, what was it, proof of weak hands. I'm not sure right. what that one's doing right now. <laughs> I'm going to check on that one. But yeah, I, I called out that scam um, after the Big Connect, Trevon James and uh, Craig Grant. They promoted this proof of weak hands where you send them ether and um, they hold that ether in a, you know, they try to call it, oh, it's a smart contract. You know, they try to, it's really, it's just a lending staking platform, but they try to call it a smart contract and get all politically correct. And, oh, yeah, it's smart. Well, there can still be a backdoor in a smart contract and they can the government can deem that a security like they did with BitConnect and all your money's gone. So I made that video and I think the first one, there's like a $10,000 sell off. The video did very well. I think it got over a thousand views and really short amount of time. Right. And then I made a few others after that. And I think they were up to eight. Oh no, I think there was, I think there was almost 18,000 ETH in the contract. Wow. Wow. So that's a lot of money if you value yeah, I mean, $1,000. <laughs> you know, sometimes there's that... I think it was $18 million. There's that free ETH scam on Twitter, I'm sure you've seen, where um, they impersonate accounts, and then they'll tell you to send ETH. They'll, like, send them one Ethereum, and they'll exactly. send it 10 and back. they'll use bots. Yeah. They'll use bots to make it look legitimate. Yeah, and I've, I've checked the wallets of some of those, and, you know, they'll have, like, you know, one, two Ether in there at any given time, you know. Are when you I, serious? Yeah, oh, yeah. So, I mean, those people are making money from that, and I think that's part of why it's hard to, to stop, because there are a lot of people that fall for it, you know? And that's where that's where I'm frustrated with Twitter. Why doesn't Twitter shut this shit down? Okay, Twitter has time to shadow right. ban us, they have time to censor us, they have time to just, I mean, they're, know, they're trying, I, like, I, I noticed on my account, I reported it, and at that time, there was really nothing going on, and I sent, like, a really detailed report about what I thought was happening in all this, and I was kind of surprised that, like, within 12 hours, they fixed it for me. Like, my account doesn't have those, you know? But one thing that happened after that is, uh, you know, a lot of these people started commenting on my account, and then they thought they were the spam bots, so they were killing their account. And so maybe you've seen there's a lot of people in crypto that are having trouble getting their accounts back. You know, that, that was a result, mm -hmm. really, of trying to kill the Ethereum bots. Like, they, you know, um, <laughs> they messed well, up. Well, then they didn't do a yeah, good job. Yeah, they messed up. So, they so it is job. surprising. You know, that's one thing I've noticed that it, it's kind of frustrating. A lot of the ICOs um, and even this, you know, there's a lot of scams that do really well in crypto, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of frustrating. It's definitely a So you'd say problem. that's kind of what you were trying to do in the beginning was trying to bring it up. To and educate and warn others about cryptocurrencies because I felt like I had a, a good enough grasp on how blockchain works and all the new tech that's coming out with it. So I figured, hey, I'll make a YouTube channel. Let's see how this goes. Right. Um, I don't put ads on my videos. I think some videos have ads because of the music I put in them, uh, okay. but I'm not doing this to like get huge. I'm just kind of testing the waters and see, see how everything goes. And it's been fun lately. It's definitely got its up and ups and downs. I was doing really good in April and, you know, like getting thousands of views and now it's slowly trickling down. And I think this has to do with the overall interest in crypto yeah, right yeah. now. Everything is no one's making and money no one's right. no one's really That's investing either, it. you know, correct, correct. And no one's making money. So until we see that spike, um, I think interest is going to decline. And so we see a little bit of a bull trend. People are going to start getting into it. And until it's easier for the average person to figure this out. And this is just like the Internet. OK, when the computers first came out. No one had a computer. No one knew how to use all the programs. But over years, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right, they made programs simpler. They made Gmail. They made Facebook. Right. They made Netflix. They made these systems and these interfaces to where the average person could do it. But it took 20 sure. years. And now you see a computer. Everyone's got a computer in their in their hand. Right. And blockchain is going to be very similar. It's going to be just like the, the dot-com bubble. Okay, we have over 1,500 coins right now. Well, I would say 1,400 of them are going to, to be worth nothing because they have no utility. They're not serving a purpose. And the ones that are in the top 50 are just going to get more market share and secure more of a solid position. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I really like Monero. I really like Bitcoin Private because they serve a utility. Um, Tron is so-so. They definitely plagiarize their white paper. 
However, and they don't have a working product, in my opinion, just like EOS, but it's still a gamble because there is that that small chance that they do come out on top and their platform does work in disrupting yeah. all these other systems. I, I agree with that. I think, you know, a lot of people have the wrong impression about Justin Sun, in my opinion. Like, uh, he does come off as kind of like a shiller because he's always, you know, promoting things. Yeah. But he, he is oh, yeah. a really big thinker, too. Like, the way that he's looking at redoing the web is really makes me think about, like, when the web started, you know. So I, I think he is – his projects are ambitious, but they're possible, you know. It, it could happen, so – yeah, I don't know. Doug Polk doesn't seem to like Tron, and I don't know why. Hmm. A lot of people are calling it a scam coin. Yeah, I don't know. I, maybe some of that's Twitter, too, you know? Like, <laughs> it seems like people get in groups My and then they story, just kind of... Yeah, I bought Tron. Remember when John McAfee was doing his pick yeah, of the week? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, one of them was Tron. Really? I was like, okay, <laughs> I, made a, I made 20x on Verge. I'm going to buy Tron. He, he made his coin pick Tron. And it was at three cents, and it didn't do anything for about mm-hmm. a week. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold it. I like their idea. I saw their website, their roadmap. It seemed relatively legitimate. I held it, and then it started going up. And it was t- ten cents, twenty cents, thirty cents, and I'm holding it all the way. I started getting greedy. I was like, okay, this thing, this is better than Ripple. This is gonna go to a right. dollar. And then I watched it go all the way down. And then I bought more. Uh, about a month ago when I made that video on Tron and the okay. mainnet. And, so you um, probably, I bought probably more, did well on that. I doubled down at two and three cents, around in that range. I'm not sure what that was in sats at the time, but I doubled down, and then when I, I sold at about 50% at eight and a, eight and a half wow. cents, I was like, okay, I'm going to secure those gains. So if anyone is watching this, definitely remember to secure Especially with Tron, to too. money. <laughs> Because it moves oh, yeah. quickly in either direction, either up or down, you know? Yeah, it's down 5% right now. And I'm actually hoping it goes down because I do want to buy some back at like 3 or 4 cents. Yeah, it'd be a good time too with their main net. Um, after it comes out, I bet it will dip a little, you know, when the reality hits. So, mm-hmm. um, All right, so what do you think's the best way for us to increase adoption in crypto? Okay, so here's my plan with adoption. With my e-commerce website, um, let's see Google stuff. I'm hoping to open up cryptocurrencies in a very subtle way to um, a very, very common market. I can't really disclose any details, but this is something that you'll see in almost every street corner. This okay. is something a lot of people do, and I'm attempting to open up them to cryptocurrencies. So on my website, I'm not just accepting crypto. We use my crypto checkout and brain blocks. So now we're, I'm going to be working on Bitcoin private payments after nice. my vacation. However, I'm very hesitant to launch until we see a bull run because people are not going to be spending money until they make money. Yeah. But in regards to adoption, I think definitely educating people on the benefits of being your own bank and how the banks take advantage of us with hidden fees and how they make money off our money. They don't even, if you have a million dollars in a bank account, you can't go to the bank and get $100,000. Right. It's very difficult. If you try to take out over 10000 yeah, they'll give it to you. But you're going to end up on a bunch of lists. Yeah. 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 They're going to be like, okay, what's why does this guy need $10,000? You know, And maybe you're just buying a new mm-hmm. car. Maybe you're buying a new whatever, a tractor. I don't know. You know? So it's definitely a good thing that we have privacy coins but in regards to adoption i think just educating people on the benefits and making it more simpler for people to get in and get started and be their own bank okay yeah so i mean that's kind of what we're both doing i guess is just trying to educate people on what we know you know and bring more people yeah, in but it's still a small circle it's still a very small circle and i notice a lot of people are more comfortable with being like reactive rather than proactive, you know, they with the drama. Yeah. Well, not just that, but also, um, they don't try to actively participate themselves. They're more just reacting to what other people are doing rather than going out and creating their own thing. You know, exactly. I agree. And that's why I was like, okay, I have the YouTube channel, but not many people are going on there and not many people are like finding my videos, crypto car talk. So how about I make an e-commerce site that isn't selling products, like it's bro, I'm not selling 
uh, Bitcoin t-shirts. I'm not selling. This is totally different. This is revolutionary. I, I see people doing that. I've talked to other merchants. Okay, mm -hmm. They're not making money doing that. Um, really? Be, and I don't want to do that because people are already doing that successfully. True. Um, so yeah. I, I'm not going into apparel or stickers. What I'm doing is so much bigger than that. And um, we're all done. We're really just getting in the products and finishing up the designs and sort of waiting. I'd like to wait for ideally like 14K Bitcoin, but wow. I'd maybe settle for 10 at this point. Sure. Launch. Yeah, I don't think it'll be that far away, but. You know, because we, we kind of stuck at this level, kind of like an accumulation level for quite a while. Um, but it does look to me like it's reversing, you know, and that it is starting to go up at least instead of always down, you know. Yeah, so. I have a question for you. Sure. What do you think are the biggest challenges that cryptocurrency faces in the next two years? Um, That's a good question. You know, I think one of the issues is kind of like the... The initial coins that we had, uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, there was a lot of politics involved with with how those grew to be so big. So I think the way that they grew uh, and going through Coinbase and such a big, huge, you know, U.S. well-funded exchange, I don't see coins of the future being able to do it that way. And also, I don't see them being able to grow through like an ICO either um, because people don't trust them as much, you know. So I think... The issues we'll face in the next couple of years are new projects getting funded and, and the ones that we have getting up to the level that maybe Litecoin is at. And, you know, like if you could get Nano up into that level, you know, um, I think it's possible. Really? <laughs> I think, <laughs> to reach I think really... Nano's possible to get in the top 20 again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely in the top 20. And even Bitcoin private, too. You know, we saw that go from like nowhere to in the top 50 well yeah and one thing to remember with bitcoin prime is most people bought z classic at a very high price you know two mm -hmm. or three times what it is now mm -hmm. except for rent of course right but <laughs> but just because it's being traded at 24 dollars 22 dollars that doesn't mean people are selling at that price these are just day traders going back and forth yeah, i'm not selling true. my btcp for less than 500 no, no i mean so. i haven't sold any <laughs> yeah same you here know? i've only accumulated right and i think there's a lot of people it's got a strong community it's one of the strongest communities i've seen for sure you know and probably because we were screwed you know because because what Rhett did and leaving the project and all that well he actually tweeted out and so i i actually am in contact i have a a Bitcoin private whale friend and he's always telling me this stuff what's going on with it Rhett tweeted and he said that um he got kicked out right. by someone named Tommy or something like that. Okay. And then, and then he started promoting the Bitcoin Prime. He said, okay, well, you kicked me out. Bitcoin Prime. Oh, that's interesting. Anyways. Okay. Yeah. And I, I was like, well, thanks. I responded. I was like, thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. That's that's definitely a twist. But now what's know? going on with this John McAfee? Why is he posting all <laughs> these fucking memes? You know what? With stickers um, and Bitcoin Private. What's okay. going on with that? Okay. I know that you kind of talked to his team and like gem crypto and people like that yeah um, i talked to them we're both kind of followed by their team i think they pay attention to what we do yeah you know and um i noticed that john was kind of promoting bitcoin private well i noticed in his answers people would ask him questions in the comments about it oh oh no 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 when i made my bitcoin private my first big one of my first bitcoin private videos i said uh bitcoin private investors lost millions who's responsible coinbase soon what's new for What's next for Bitcoin Private? Um, actually, he had tweeted out when I made that video. That was April seventh. We're at no April eleventh. Twenty five hundred views now, but he tweeted that Bitcoin Private would be between thirty nine thousand and three hundred and ninety thousand, and I think it was four years. So he's he's been doing that since April. Yeah, but now it's it's in my face. I see right exactly. Yeah, I mean. I kind of caught the same thing. I kind of caught it and um, I said something about him. You know, someone asked me something and I was like, well, I was like, John McAfee likes this. So it, you know, at some point I think he'll shill it. And Jem Crypto commented and she's like, you know, oh, where did you see that or something, you know? And I was like, oh no, I saw a couple times he, he's like this. And she's like, yeah, you're right, you know? And so I think this is something, it's probably something in the background they've kind of been talking about, you know? I don't think I don't think Bitcoin Private is paying him at all in the I way do, that ICOs I did. I think he might be getting paid. Really? 
he doesn't do anything for free. He but in but he opinion. might have a big share of the coins, you know, and he might be in the same position we're in where he's trying to pump them up because at, at this level we can't even get rid of them, you know. Maybe I don't want to get rid of them though. Right. It does have one of the strongest utilities of of any of the coins out there because as far as privacy coins, I mean, basing it on Bitcoin, um, I really like the uh, the. St- it's a solid code base. Like Satoshi built really solid code. Exactly. You know, it's a genius project. Mm-hmm. It's it's absolutely wonderful. I love the tech behind it, the zero knowledge proofs, and everything about it. Back in the day, when we would have to, tr- we would attempt to make Bitcoin anonymous, and you would do this using like a mixer or a tumblr service you would sign up for the, a website and on tour and you would send your coins through this service they'd give you an address to send it to and then give an output address so you would send a bitcoin to this address and it would bounce it would bounce it around like 100 times through different addresses and the reason and they're doing this i guess for anybody listening is because they're trying to make it so you can't track which wallet the funds are in right Exactly. So then you could send it to local Bitcoins and cash it out. And if you cashed out to an undercover agent and they tried to trace it, it would be very, very difficult to know which wallet was yours, basically. Exactly. Where did this come from? But it's still possible to I believe it was still possible with the technology that the government has. I still think it was possible for them to trace that. Okay. Um, I think the government definitely has a lot of technology that they haven't really released to the public. And the NSA has a ton of stuff as well. They're doing with supercomputers and AI. It's just insane. Yeah. Um, okay, so, I mean, from when you started in crypto to where we are now, what do you think has changed? Like, where where has it moved? Who? Um, how has it changed? It's all, at first, it was just about, well, for me, drugs, of course, and the tech. But mm. how has it changed? It's it's all greed now. It's it's definitely greed. Oh, when Moon, when Lambo. Sure. And the funny thing is, the funny thing is, a lot of these guys and gals that I've talked to, they jumped into it. I sold out a lot at the top. Well, they they bought they bought nineteen thousand five hundred dollar Bitcoin, um, you know, two hundred dollar Litecoin. They were buying this to get rich. They were buying this to get rich, and they got wrecked. They got fucking wrecked. I, I came in on that wave for sure. I never you did. Yeah, I never bought twenty thousand oh, dollar Bitcoin. I mean, luckily, you know the. I think the most I paid for Bitcoin I know a gal was like nine thousand. You know, I know a gal who did, and she's on Twitter. But she bought at nineteen thousand Bitcoin and then tried to day trade, Ooh. and got even more wrecked wow. and turned that nineteen thousand. And she she used an ATM, so she actually paid like twenty thousand. She wow. used a Bitcoin ATM in oh, Canada, man. and then she day traded, and she got wrecked. <laughs> she squandered it all the way down to seven thousand. Oh man! And and it was like student loan money too. And there's a lot there's a lot of people that did that. Oh, let's get a mortgage on the house. Our four hundred one k. I see a lot of oh, people yeah. put their four hundred one k into crypto. Oh, yeah. They bought at the top. You know you know what? I've even. Oh, what? Sorry. You know what's interesting? I ran a poll and. Um, I think I got like 400 responses, so it was a pretty good response. And I was asking people how much they have in crypto, you know, how much a percentage of their income or their their wealth, their you know, their money they have in crypto. And the right. probably the most popular answer was was pretty much all of it. Well, you see, and they're gonna get wrecked because it's gonna be like the dot com bubble when all this when all these shitty alts, these hot cheap coins that everyone loves, they're gonna go to zero, man. You think? I, I know this for a fact. Yeah. It's I've seen it. I did dabble with the stock market at the time too in 2013, um, specifically weed stocks okay. um, because it's a huge industry. But they were all pump and dumps. I made some money, but I didn't secure those gains, and I watched it go down. It's just like with the pink book stocks and the penny stocks. This is all gambling, and you should only invest the money that you put in crypto. You put a thousand dollars into crypto. Consider that money gone, like going to a casino. And if you see a nice return on it, you know, cash out your initial investment and then play on the house because that's what I've been doing. Mm-hmm. But even with that, with that, um, that game plan, that mo, um, I still have probably eighty percent of my my wealth in cryptocurrencies because I'm just I'm a gambler. I'm a risk taker. I'm the same way. I mean, it, I really believe in it too. Exactly. And I want to make sure that uh, I can 
have as much of an impact on it as possible, you know? So. Oh, yeah, it's revolutionary. Now, another thing that I'm a fan of is precious metals, like gold and silver. Okay. Because these also, like cryptocurrencies, it's a store of value, but it's physical, and it's always going to keep that value no matter what. It's not going to zero. And also hard to trace, but it's hard to it's hard to transact like a million dollars worth of silver or gold. It's impossible to really transact unless you have a lot of suitcases. Right. And that's where I think Bitcoin private and Bitcoin have a utility in where you can just store your wealth, be your own bank in a little ledger wallet Mm -hmm. and it can be secure. Yeah. That's that part I really like about crypto. I read this book when I was, um, I was in a college like library. I wasn't even going to the college. I was just at their library and I got this book. It was on the economy about trade. I can't remember how I got into it. And I was at the time I was thinking about going into business school, which I did end up going to that, that school later on. But anyway, um, you know, I started looking at this book and I I don't remember what it was or anything, but it was talking about how people traded in like pebbles or whatever, commodity they had in their village you know and that book came back to me when i got into crypto i started thinking about you know what um when you look at like the the federal reserve and how they set the dollar the or the dollar value and everything you know what really is setting the value of what we transact with do we need the government to set that it has value because they say exactly exactly the dollar is backed by the government yeah and so i think i think anything can have that value you know what no matter what we trade whether it's data or bits or whatever or pebbles. Well, we got McAfee, right? right. McAfee. And he's got a lot. He's, he's got <laughs> a, a lot of people behind him too that are helping him. Well, you hear what he's doing with his? Uh, he's making a, a fiat currency backed by cryptocurrency called Mac, McAfee Redemption Units. Okay, and MC. Yeah, I, I saw want to that. warn everyone that's listening to this: don't invest into this this thing. It's very very shady. Okay. Okay. He wants you to pay nine ninety five for one McAfee Redemption unit. Okay. And I quoted, I read the article, I quoted it, and he is setting, uh, what's the supply? I believe the supply was, well, I'm not, I can't recall what the supply was. However, if you multiply the price of his MRU McAfee Redemption unit times the price of each coin, nine ninety five, comes out to sixty million dollars. So I quoted that part. And I said, I replied to him. I said, it's a, uh, I said, times that by the supply, 995. And I said, wow, 60 million. It's a really nice way to, genius idea to raise $60 million. Well, how does this coin work? You buy your R or MRUs, and now you have this cryptocurrency MRU, which is supposedly backed by cryptocurrency in his wallet or whatever. Okay. And to redeem these units, you can. Go to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, some shady office, <laughs> and you give them the the MRU. It's a it's a fiat currency, wow. it's paper, and there's photos. I don't sounds know like the cartel. It, it sounds like the it. cartel is backing this, not not McAfee. <laughs> yeah, well, you go and redeem it there, and then they'll give you a time and location on where you can meet him. And ah, one whoa. McAfee redemption unit is one minute of his time. Okay. So I also commented on one. I was like, man, if I put a thousand dollars into this. You better be knocking on my door, like I'm not coming I'm to not Mexico, going to Puerto Vallarta, yeah. just to then go back in the states and meet you, probably in Tennessee, because that's he lives in Nashville, Tennessee, I believe. So <laughs> why would I do that? It's it's just such such like blatant like manipulation. What he did with Verge back in December, man. Yeah, that was very very. It's really unethical stuff. I'm in Verge right now, actually. You know, I think I made a mistake because I saw they had that partnership with Pornhub and it crashed. And so I one thing I've done when I first got into crypto is I was doing a lot of like pump and dumps, you know, and um, not on purpose. The bike, (laughs) the bike coin would have been a good one. I did a pump and dump, too, man. I bought Verge like at like one cent. And this is just pure luck. And then. At that time, McAfee was talking with Verge Whale and the Verge Dev. Okay. They paid him off to say, oh, this coin's going to go to $7. Wow. And then I watched it go. I didn't put a lot in it, but I watched it go from $0.01 cent to $0.05 cents to $0.10 cents to $0.20 cents to $0.30. Cents. Yeah. And I just I cashed out at 17 21 and 26 And I just had a little bit left that actually got lost. I tried to send it to Kropopia and it got lost. And they got back to me after a week. And 
it showed up, and this was the time of the Pornhub announcement, and then I dumped it there. I think it was at like seven or eight cents. Okay. Yeah, I so, bought after that dip, thinking that it would recover, and then they started getting right. these hacks, and it just right, kept going right. down. So I'm still still holding that one. Yeah, and there's some stuff going on with the hacks. I was hearing that BTCP can also get a 51% hack. Yeah. I heard it could because Bitcoin Gold was having issues. These developers are reckless too. Like once, you know, I've seen, um, I'm not going to bad talk anyone specifically, but once some of the competitive or one of the competitors of those developers figure out these issues, they really try to make it public, you know, and they really try to um, bring them down on this, I've, I've noticed. Like, you know, there's there's a lot of competition between these coins, between the developers of the coins, and um, oh yeah, if they have a big following, then they'll use that to kind of sway them against their competitors as much as they will for their own coin. So a lot of what I've seen with people talking about um, the bad things about Bitcoin Cash will be other developers, you know, from other coins, um, mm-hmm. and so that's something I've I've noticed happens to Verge lately too. So. What what do you know about Bitcoin Dark? I've always seen this one. I never looked into it. What's what's their deal? No, it's up sixteen percent right now. Really, no clue. I know Bitcoin's easy to fork. Like you can pretty much pay a thousand dollars online and and get your own fork of Bitcoin. You know. Really? Yeah. Wow. So that's why there's like I'm make twenty a, of them right now. Bitcoin Bitcoin crypto or Bitcoin car talk. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. What, that kind of gets us to a question I wanted to ask you about uh, Steemit. You know, what can we do to get people to start using Steemit? Because I can't, I can't get any traction there. I'll get followers, but it's tough to make any money on that platform. I agree. Um, how Steemit works is, I'll go back to your question, but how Steemit works is in regards to making Steam on their platform. It's not about really how many followers you have upvoting you. Mm-hmm. It's about who is upvoting who is upvoting? Okay. Yeah. If someone has more money, for instance, I started with literally nothing with Steemit. And now let's look at my Steemit wallet. I have 46 Steam coins. Wow. And they're all dedicated for Steam power. And this is all money that you've made from Steemit. This... Yes. Wow. And I joined in February, so it's been three or four months. But I've been consistently using it, and it's about who upvotes you. So, for instance, I'm holding these 46 Steam tokens. Well, my upvote here, it's only worth one or two cents. So someone who has thousands of dollars in Steam Power, Steam tokens delegated for Steam Power, would give a greater value upvote. So, yeah, actually, my upvote is worth two cents because I just upvoted someone, and they got two cents for my upvote. So really not a whole lot of money. Unless you have some big whale. Now, a technique that I've used, and I've talked about this in my video, revealing my Steam at Secrets, there's a service called Steam Bot Tracker. And I believe they are affiliated with Steam it because you can use their platform and log into your Steam it account to pay. So how this, Steam, how this works is you have these bots, um, these people that run these bots, and they have a lot of, they have thousands of dollars, 20,000, 40,000 in Steam Power delegating it. So you would send them uh, Steam or Steam dollars and they would upvote your post. And it's not always profitable, but you can find pro- very profitable ones where you would get 10 to 20% back to what you send it. So if you sent it $10 worth of Steam, you would get back 12 to $14. Okay, so... And that's the profit you're going to make. You're so going high. to make like 20% in addition to profit, your yeah. to what you invested. Correct. Okay. Yeah, you'll get your money back plus their vote value. Okay. And that's just because – and then they get your Steam money that you sent them, and then that goes to their delegation, and they grow as well. Okay. It's very comp- – it's still so complex, and that's why I think a lot of people haven't – when I tell – People about Steam it, they're really interested because they can earn money. They love that idea. But once you get into it, it is a little bit complex and it needs to be made simpler. It's probably like internet marketing. You know, I got into that and um, it's it's something that I probably spent years trying to make my first hundred dollars on. Really? Mine, you know, but once I... It took yeah, years? because I was trying to sell like information. Well, I guess for a long time I was just buying things. You know, I was trying to learn how to do uh-huh. it. So I spent a lot of money learning how to do it. 
made my first money online doing affiliate marketing, you know. I was basically doing an ad for people to sign up for a free game. And for each person that signed up, I would make like a dollar per sign up. And I went from, I was making like $10 a day with this and I was pretty happy with it. And I talked to my affiliate manager, you right. know, and I, and he's like, when are you actually going to start doing this? You know, when are you going to actually start making money with it? And so at that point I realized, wow, I'm not even like scratching the surface. And I went from making, you know, the $10 a okay. day to that's like, like $10 a day. That's like, slave labor wage well <laughs> it is but you gotta remember like it's just an ad it, it's like i didn't have to do any work you know so it wasn't really labor I, I set the ad up and then it was making me this recurring so that's nice like 300 bucks a month that you don't have to do anything for you know yeah but that's kind of what it was like i realized okay this is working i didn't want to change it and then my affiliate manager talked to me and he's like you know when are you actually going to do this so i started making like a hundred to maybe you know a couple hundred dollars a day and then on the weekends once this got better, I was some, at some points I was making over a thousand dollars a day, which is a huge wow. difference from the ten dollar, you know. But really, it was just a mental thing that I just thought this is what all the traffic there was. And once I up my budget and started thinking bigger, I was able to make a lot more money. So when I got into Steam, it I was kind of the same thing. Here I'm making like forty cents, and I didn't want to go through yep. that process again where it takes so long to to actually get it rolling. So once you figure out a system, like you said, you got the system with the bot. And then yep. I, I imagine that your your profits really changed at that point. You know, you started making more serious money. Yeah, no, it's it's not serious. <laughs> but it, maybe it could be though. It's you know what change. I mean? Maybe it could it be. It could be in a year. In a year, I'd say. And plus, it could just be like a mental thing, like I was saying, where you think, okay, this is nice because I can make you know ten bucks, hundred hundred bucks. But maybe there's people yeah. out there that are making a thousand using the same method. They're just thinking a little more into it you know like there are yeah because you can see people making hundreds of dollars for one post but they if you look they've been doing it for a while yeah and definitely have it down and like hagen have you seen hagen crypto at all he's a i don't know he does charts so i don't know if you pay attention to that i'm not too big on the the ta this guy what, he publishes his is, charts he'll publish a chart of anything like apple or you know it's not okay. all crypto it's whatever he wants to and he'll make two Two to five hundred bucks per chart. How? I don't know. Oh, just posting it on Steam. Yeah, he has so many followers, and he's been doing it right for the longest time. And yeah, I mean, I counted it one day; he was making like two thousand dollars a day, just posting wow. charts. Maybe like five charts, you know, that I would get nothing for posting on Twitter, and he's making two thousand. And then I see people on Twitter yep. to call him out, you know, and oh, this chart's wrong. He does not care, you know. <laughs> he, he doesn't care. Well, he's making money. Right. He's doing his thing. Right. You know. People who, I mean, I've gotten a lot of mean comments and a lot of hate, especially for the proof of we can thing. They did not take that nicely. Totally. But, you know, the thing is, people who put other people down and spread hate, they're insecure about something. So they feel they have to bring other people, other people down with them. And I think it's a way to eliminate competition for some people. You know, they, yeah. they try attacking but it. Them. It backfires. It backfires because when they oh, it does. Were, it does definitely. It does backfire because it just gives you more attention. We saw mm -hmm. that with, with Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Any press is good press, and that's why I am guilty of this. You know, I will comment a lot on McAfee's posts, and I will call him out on his shit, and I will just be there. Oh yeah. If right. they're doing unethical things, they need to be called out for it. That's probably why we kind of connected at first, you know, because neither one of us were really afraid to go after the leaders. Like, we didn't, you know, we weren't intimidated. Okay, well, um, just a couple more things, and then we'll try to wrap this up. Um, what are you looking at for... Um, like what coins are you looking at for for the end of this year? Because I noticed in 2017, everything kind of paid off in December. You know, so what are you planning right now for like the end of the year? I'm anticipating to, like we saw with Tron, man. A lot of people, I'm sure. I mean, I sold at eight and a half. I think people are smartening up. I think they're going to secure those gains, and I think you got to be early when you do see. I've kind of made myself a rule because if I. 10x definitely out at that point because it's going to dip so you're not one of the people that has like some coins that you hold forever oh yeah i do i do you do Bitcoin okay private and some okay. tron that i have in a in a ledger that's i do have like 
you know, you never want to trade with your whole position. Maybe put half for long term and just kind of forget about it just okay. in case. And then the rest, yeah, play with it. Make some money on it. Day trade Do you it. typically buy like one cryptocurrency or do you buy like maybe five at a time and see which one does best? I go with one. I don't I go with ones that that I like that projects that are definitely solid. I don't I don't go like five. I'll do one one, two at a time, really. Like and I, I never I never sell a red to buy a green. So like this guy, this BTC P whale, um, he's like, oh, you know, look at Bitcoin, it's starting to go up, and this is with oh, that's a great point. Okay, yeah, and he's like, oh, you know, should I buy it? Should I sell some BTCP? Well, I'm like, bro, you have forty thousand in this, it's gonna go down, you know, um, the Bitcoin, it's gonna pull back, and you're in the red with BTCP, so I would not sell a red to chase a green, but I will sell a green to chase a red if that makes sense. So like, I sold Tron at like eight and a half cents, and then I don't remember. Oh yeah, I put that into USD. But if there was a coin that has was a solid project and was a coin that had a great team, and it was down 10, 20 percent, then I would put that money into that coin. So pretty much okay. buy buy red, sell green. That is that's a, a great point. A, yeah, because I know fundamental that I got from another YouTuber. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So basically, what you're saying is, if you have a coin that is down. Don't sell it to try to chase like where the grass is always greener. You know, Correct. don't sell it to try to find something that's doing better. Correct. Right? Because whatever's doing better will pull back is what totally. I've learned. We've seen that totally. Yes. Yeah. That's one of the biggest, that's probably my biggest problem is right. especially being on Twitter. Don't get FOMO. Yeah. I FOMO all the time. <laughs> you just need to tell yourself that what goes up must come down. Well, that's kind of how I based at one point, I decided this isn't going to work, and I realized that I needed to figure out how to get better at my entry, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, usually, if people are, are pumping something on Twitter, or they're promoting it, it's a terrible time to enter. Yes. Because they're, yes. they're pumping it because yes. they want to get rid Stay of it. Stay away from those Telegram pump and dump groups because you're buying their bags at the top. Like, I don't know, some people pay $500 to join these scammy groups, and some of the free ones they have thousands of people in it and i just can't comprehend what I mean, even i've noticed people do this with charts too it's kind of controversial nobody really talks about this but they'll make charts look like they're more positive than they are oh, yeah. they'll be at the top and they'll be like okay we have like three more legs up we're going to go and they know we're already at the top and they're just trying to sell into you buying you know yeah yeah to yeah yeah that makes sense i never thought about that cuz i don't pay too much attention to the charts i do do a little bit of technical analysis Okay. Based off of like short term and to see if we're going up or down, you know, higher right. highs, lower lows, that kind of stuff. So you look the at the RSI, trend, basically. Yeah, look I look at the trend. trend. I look okay. a little bit at the RSI, the MACD, but I don't read too much into it because technical analysis doesn't take into account um, the team. If a huge whale decides to sell, right. cash out, there's a lot of things that technical technical analysis does not take into account. Like this is not a rational market at all. No, I 100% agree, especially if you're holding, if you're trying to monitor the charts, I mean, there's really no point, you know, the, the charts are more if you're going to day trade or swing trade, and you know, your exact entry and your exact exit position, then you can use the charts. But um, other than that, you know, like you said, it might be good for kind of monitoring the trend, see where if we're at a low or we're at the top right now. Yeah, but I definitely think there's a lot of things that that doesn't take into account like hacks and news and all that kind of stuff. But I'm sure there are there are trends, but if it did work, then everyone would be doing it and everyone would be making money. Well, and that's another thing, though, too, is it took me months before I realized what I should be doing with the charts, you know? And that is, again, just trying to find the best entry. How much has it retraced this far, you know? And when will it bounce? Is this a bounce? You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that you have to learn um, and if you're just going off of, especially if you're going off of other people's charts, uh, I, actually, I would just say just don't. So I have a question. What do you think of zero X? Okay, um, that's ZRX. Is that right? Uh, ZRX. Yeah. So they had another FOMO thing. I was like you. I was like, man, Coinbase is going to list this, mm. and it pumped right. It right. pumped up to what a dollar thirty, and then it dumped. It did pull back. And now it's sort of back up again. But yeah, it went to a dollar. It was a dollar. It went to a dollar thirty-five, and then it did pull back slightly. 
What do you think of that coin? Because, I mean, Coinbase is going to list this and attempt to list all the coins. The ERC. Correct, yeah. Yeah. I I post on my Instagram, but it's like EOS, Mm -hmm. um, basic attendant token, Mm -hmm. a bunch of, it's like 10 other ERC20 tokens that they're going to list. Sure. And also the 0x. So what do you think of 0x? Well, okay, first of all, on the ERC20 thing, I don't know how near the future that is, but I do think for sure that will happen. You know, that's not just a rumor. It's inevitable. They announced it. Yeah, and... And I know there's like some securities things or whatever they're trying to work out, but I'm sure that'll all happen in the near future. So I guess ZRX, I haven't really looked too far into it myself. Um, One thing I noticed is that when a lot of that news was coming out about Coinbase, the chart was looking good at that time too. Like it had just finished uh, a cup and handle pattern, you know, which is like this thing where it it is going to dip a little at the end no matter what. So I think that dip was caused by just the chart, the TA And then when it started to go up, it was the reversal of that. They tried to pump it, you know. A lot of the news that happens is really based around the chart, in my opinion. And they'll release the news at the times that it's going to make the most impact, you know. Interesting. Yeah. So I don't think the Coinbase thing with CRX is is an immediate future at all. I think it's probably just a rumor to try to pump it since the chart was in a good position. Right. No, Um, I plan on buying 0x when it dips to like 99 cents. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's people. A lot of people have recommended it to me, so I assume it's probably a good coin. You know, I get recommendations all the time, and I really kind of base it on who's giving it to me. Well, it's an open, permissionless protocol allowing for ERC twenty tokens to be traded on the Ethereum blockchain, and they have all these projects: um, Radar, Paradex. Now, that's the exchange that Coinbase okay, that wants coin- to deal with. Yeah. The Ocean X. Ethinex, Polypore, Maker, they have about one, two, four, five, six, they have about 18 of these projects being built on their decentralized um, exchange, I believe. Hmm. I haven't looked into it either that closely. I haven't had time, but I do plan on, I, I think that this will be added in the future to Coinbase. Yeah. So I definitely would want to get into this. The only thing I would say on that, though, is I wouldn't base anything on being listed on Coinbase at this point, you know, because we haven't seen it happen yet. Other than other than Bitcoin Cash, which was basically insider trading. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I mean, people got wrecked. They sold their Bcash at like two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. And oh, yeah, I'm buying more Bitcoin. Yeah, I remember they listed it. It was like eight K. And it like bugged out. No one could sell. It was very strange. It's still a good. It's still a good one to invest in though. At the right times, I just sold some yesterday. I'm bullish on it. About (laughs) two months ago, it was at five hundred dollars, and I had some USD in the bank. I was like, "Eh, I should buy some B cash, but I didn't, and I'm kind of beating myself up for it because it went all the way up to fifteen hundred. Then with some rumors of a fork going on with their coin, I'm not sure if it was a hard fork or a soft fork, or a sharp fork, or a dull fork, I don't know. But there was some news going on with the Bitcoin Cash, and it just shot back up. Yeah. It does really well. Like, it it outperforms Bitcoin most of the time when Bitcoin is going up, you know? Oh, yeah. And some people think that it's it's going to flip and overtake Bitcoin. I don't think that will happen, but I definitely think that there is a use for it. Yeah. Plus, it's got a really strong community. So, And that's probably one of the best... I guess let's end on that because we got to wrap this up here. But what would you say is the most important thing, you know, for running a good project? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, Definitely active contribution and being active, keeping everyone, keeping everyone who is invested in the project and part of the community, keeping them kind of in the loop and don't keep them in the dark because if you don't give updates and have that communication. I think communication is really important. If you don't have that that factor, a lot of people are going to either get upset or panic. Okay. So for that reason, I think communication is key in a lot of these things. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I've noticed that a lot of times when there's a huge sell-off, it's because of lack of communication. Like there's a hack and they won't talk about it, you know? Yeah, they don't want to address it and they just kind of hide from it. Yeah, so... Yeah. 
All right. Well, I'm I'm really happy that we got to do this interview, and uh, oh, yeah, hopefully it's been people... great, man. This is awesome. Yeah, it's a great way to start it because I, you know, um, you have a lot of the fundamental understanding that um, from being in this for so long that people can mm-hmm. gain from. So, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go back outside and enjoy some San Diego sunlight. All right. Yeah. Have, enjoy the rest of your weather. trip. Yeah, for sure. Um, are you gonna post this on Twitter? Um, I'm going to take a little bit of time to edit it probably in the next few days. What's funny, I did, okay. I did that podcast with that other guy like five weeks ago. He hasn't published it yet. So I, hopefully it won't take me that long, but, um, yeah, I just, just need to figure a couple things out and then I'll get it uploaded and it shouldn't can be too I, long. Can I, um, can I put it on my channel when you're done as well? Yeah. And maybe like tag you in it? Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I'll give you the, the file when I'm done with it all. Sweet. Yeah. Dropbox let's uh, be in contact. Sounds good. Um. All right. Talk to you later, man. Thanks, CCT. Bye. Bye.